say it's sealed off at the middle of the street. Right now, we're standing in what, as I mentioned before, every building has, or every cave has a nickname. This is called the patio. In the old, old days, this is where the employees had their break. To my right is a tunnel that has the nickname Davy Thomas Bypass in the loving memory of Dave Thomas, uh, who worked here for 38 years back uh, in the 60s and 70s. So come with me and we'll go see some of the caves. This is the very first cave. Um, in 1854, a gentleman named Gottfried Fleckenstein began using this cave as a brewery. Now remember, in the old, old days, outside this door was the Straight River. Uh, it hadn't been moved yet for the first time. Across the banks from the Straight River was a high ground, and that's why Alexander Faribault first came to Faribault. It's where they had their Indian rendezvous. What made it ideal is there's another river to the north of us about a mile and a half that flows all the way from western Minnesota. So it actually was an ideal meeting area back in the fur trading days. So back to the cave. This was a brewery cave from 1854 or 56 all the way up until Prohibition in 1918. At that time there was two buildings on this site and the office was just being um, put together. With Prohibition this plant shut down as a brewery and lay idle for almost 18 years. In 1936 a man named Felix Fredrickson, a food scientist from Kraft who lived in Wausau, Wisconsin, was on his way with his wife Dorothy to look at St. Peter Sandstone Caves in St. Peter, Minnesota. They stopped here in Faribault for a break. He found these caves and on December 8th of 1936 purchased this property and this became the first blue cheese plant in the United States. Back in um, the late 1800s when this was being used as a brewery, this cave hadn't been dug yet. The St. Peter Sandstone, one of its unique qualities is its 99.9% .9 pure quartzite. St. Peter Sandstone has a second unique property. It's self-supporting in a Gothic arch. This cave um, is incredible. It was dug by hand in 1941. Uh, when we have to remind ourselves about how important the details are of cheese making, I like to come back out here and look at these walls. They were hand carved with four inch scrapers so that they'd be perfectly smooth. Right now, we're standing at the intersection of several of the caves. We're about 162 feet below the surface of the ground, which is far above us on Shattuck St. Mary's campus. One of the incredibly unique features of Faribault Dairy and our cheese caves is that the caves have memory. Uh, we have found that there's microflora here from back when this was a brewery and it still exists today. It's growing on the cave walls. We encourage it to continue here. One of the incredible things that we found it does is bring out flavors and nuances in cheese that would under otherwise go undiscovered. An example is here on my left. Uh, as this cheese matures in our caves, it's known as affinage, it will develop pathways, metabolic pathways that will give it flavors that simply aren't possible in conventional aging.